I want to tell you a little bit about the Oracle because we did it last time, but there's so many people that weren't in Arizona, and I would like to just tell you how it originated. It was at the first training that we trained a number of facilitators, and afterwards we were like confused. We didn't know how to take this forward, and there was the issues of the copyright and the cards, and well, how do we do this in a way that's ethical and has integrity and so forth. So we asked that question in a community question sitting outside around the table at Celine's house and that was the answer. We take it with integrity, ethics, and under the radar for a period of time. We do not put it out to the major people. We don't go to Oprah at this point. And <laughs> the very strong message was not too fast until we're ready for it. And we followed that. We, the guidance came and we followed it. At the first Soul Collage conference, we asked another community question. And it became the oracle at that point, that we all are the oracle. The oracle is the community. What will help Soul Collage do its transformative work? And again, we got holding our spiritual center, holding our integrity, creating diversity came up, bringing in men and teenagers and ethnic groups and lower or and upper socioeconomic groups and villages of interest. And I think we've done that without calling it that. Maybe we should call it that. It's great. Collaboration and contribution and another conference. Kat and Karen Lubin raised their hands. Said, we'll do it. We'll do it. And they did it. 2008, we did the Oracle again. We kind of future tripped and we said, what will make a difference in 2009, which hadn't been there yet. This was 2008. Those answers are published in the Netter Letter, so you can read them. Some of them were funny, like Soul Collage will be done at the White House. And again, back to integrity. In 2009, I had just come from a conference in Wisconsin where I saw Andrew Harvey. My heart just broke open listening to him about what we were up against in terms of the perfect storm of catastrophes in this world, how we were going to mobilize our hope and our sacred activism. It was just so moving. We had a circle up here, and people came up and shared what they got from their cards about what they were committed to do about sacred activism. They wrote them on these kind of cards, and I collected them all, and we cataloged them all. They are also on Netter Letter archives, so you can go back and read them. The question was, what is the guidance offered for our soul collage community at this critical juncture or life on Earth? No one took notes about the sacred circle sharing. It wasn't recorded. It was very deep and heart-touching for anyone who was there. My own commitment was to strengthen my practice, to do yoga, to do pranayama, to do basic exercise. I wanted to take my heart to sign up at a gym and strengthen it because I realized at that conference I wasn't strong enough. My heart wasn't strong enough to take in all of the pain and do something. I've done this, and I bet a lot of people who made commitments have done that, too. I just want to read a little sampling of what people said they were going to do. You may recognize yourselves if you were there. Bless the earth from my heart every day. I'm going to speak up and encourage others to speak up. I'm going to challenge my thinking that we are doomed. I'm going to use less plastic. I'm going to create soul collage cards that honor places. I'm going to work with the Jane Goodall group. I'm going to support my sister in Rwanda in as many ways as possible. I'm going to look into micro-lending. I'm going to offer soul collage in prison. I'm going to make daily choices of organic local foods. I'm going to end violence in my internal self. I'm going to be available to companion the dying. I'm going to be in my power. People need to see power that is not destructive. These were all things that people said. Today, we still have these challenges. Two years later, I think we're seeing some breakdown of the structures that has to happen in the death rebirth process that's happening. We see changes in ourselves. And I'm really empowered by seeing all the hope and the joy and all of that that we've seen in this conference. I think maybe there's people out there that are still in the fear and grief because every change, even if it's a good change, 
and some of these aren't so good, has grief involved. How can we expand ourselves to help with that? What is the question? And I struggle and struggle over this you know, every time I have to do it. What is the question in each of your hearts? How can I verbalize that? And if we had a longer process, maybe we'd do little groups and bring it out and decide on a question, but we don't kind of have time. So I want to ask you if this basic question is OK. And it is, what guidance do you have about the paradigm shift? and thinking about that in terms of each of your personal stories and the larger story. What guidance do you have? And I'm asking your netters, what guidance do you have about the paradigm shift? I am one who will prepare for the shift with an open and giving and loving heart. We will need the wisdom of the sage and the crone I must let go of my grieving. You must be aware of the planet. We need to look to the past to learn about our future. Open your eyes to truth, love yourself, and let that love embrace others. 